Good day everyone, just want to talk to you about a document that I have put together and I refer to as the Germanium Transistor Encyclopedia. Um, it's, a, it's a document that has a vast number of germanium transistors that I've tested and I've recorded all the uh, characteristics of and there's a couple of reasons why I did it. The first is because I don't exactly sell large volumes of germanium, germanium transistor sets on the do it yourself guitar pedal web store. Um, I reckon maybe one a week, maybe two a week, um, so it's, we're not talking like high volume here. Um, but when I do go to buy germanium transistor, uh, germanium, germanium transistors, I want to make sure that what I'm buying is usable um, for the web store. And this document's helped immensely because in it, I have already tested samples and curve traced uh, samples. So usually it's 10, sometimes it's 20, sometimes it's 30 uh, transistors to see. Uh, you can see visually on, on the graph um, where those 10 germanium transistors um, appear and work out from there if they are electronically good. But I also have tested them in circuit as well to make sure that they sound good as well because just because they appear nicely on a graph does not mean they're actually going to sound good in a fuzz circuit. So all of these transistors I have tested exactly the same in circuit and sonically as well. So like I said, it helps immensely having this document. If I just look at the model number, bang, I can see exactly what I, what I, um, what I recorded and all my notes, uh, my listening notes when I was playing the guitar in front, of the, in front of the fuzz pedal. And I've actually, sonically, I've actually scored it out of five as well, each transistor out of five, because like I said, sometimes they, sometimes they are electronically perfect, but they don't sound very good. Um, so you have to take both uh, both sides of the coin um, into consideration, um, and it saves you saves me a lot of money not having to uh, buy kind of you know I don't want to use the word rubbish transistors because all transistors have a use, um, but basically just ones that that don't suit our purposes. Three out of five is <coughs> good. Four out of five is very good, and five out of five is a little bit like the mythical diode. Um, I actually, and funny enough, I actually only had, I only actually rated one germanium transistor as a five out of five um, from all the transistors that I've tested. Um, so all of the transistors that I've ever used since I started building pedals, there's only been one that I would consider to be. <coughs> Still not, it's still not perfect because nothing kind of is, but it's probably the best of the of the Germanium transistors that I've tested. Now you might think that this is a clever clever marketing ploy that I'm giving you here, but I'll tell you now that transistor I don't have many of, and they very rarely appear on the web store. I'm not trying to just sort of reel you in here and say, oh, I've got the best transistors, you know create some sort of hype. That's not the intention of the video. I just wanted to show you how thoroughly I actually test the transistors if you are considering buying one from me and also prompt you to maybe, well, how do I put this, take a bit more of an analytical approach to testing transistors um, because it will really, it, it, the, the time you invest now will actually help you a lot in the future. So if you're a pedal builder and you're doing small volumes or medium volumes of of something that's fuzz related and you've got stores of transistors, do what I do and test them all um, sonically and, um, and electronically and keep a log so that you can check those down the track and see um, what, uh, re, re read what you, what, you, what you saw previously. It saves a lot of time. I get, I've got quite a few in the four, three and four mark, and I've got quite a few in the one and two mark. So one and two is pretty much at the point where there's something wrong. It's, it's either it's either lacking gain, um, or it's the, the frequency response is kind of rubbing me the wrong way. Now, take also take into account that when I say sonic, uh, like you know, like um, uh, an audible test, an audio test, 
personal preference comes into that because your ears aren't the same as mine. What I think is a five, you might think is a one. It's just the way that that works. So I'll show you a couple of transistors that I've um, checked and my notes. You might find the notes interesting to see what I've written down and just how I've actually sort of, not so much how I've tested it, but some of the results for one of the tests that I've done. Um, and um, yeah, you can see what the document looks like. So. I don't know, I just thought this might be interesting. Maybe you're considering buying a Dravanium transistor set from me. You can just see what sort of testing that I've done, um, apart from the obvious of just actually electronically testing it. Um, and like I said, if you're a pedal builder, maybe you've got tra transistors lying around all over the place and this might be a good way to actually um, get some sort of catalogue. Let's take a look. I can't remember if I said this before, but um, I'm gonna have to block out some of the information on here because I can't share it because it's just, it's cost me a lot of money. It's been quite a bit of an outlay um, actually putting it together and getting all the samples in and testing them all and etc. And if you let the document out, uh, everyone just starts buying all the good stuff and leaving leaving the not so good stuff. So it's not going to work for anybody. So I'm sort of keeping it a little bit hush hush. Sorry, you have to forgive me. Um, but I'll just show you a couple of um, examples of two models um, that I've tested just to, so you can see what I've done um, as far as that goes. So. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to narrate this to you, so you can just you can just um, sort of read that. Uh, I'll just read it to you. So this is the um, this is just my my introduction to the document of what, what um, how I've tested it. So all transistors in this guide are tested at uh, four microamps and nine microamps base current with the DCA75. This is a basic curve trace simulation of the small bear simplified transistor tester circuit. The test yields results very similar to the small bear circuit and roughly similar to the RG Keen test circuit. The transistors are tested in batches of 10. Occasionally I've chosen to measure more than 10 in situations where the results vary wildly or the sample shows inconsistency and could thus benefit from more data. General game buckets I look for are as follows and then I've just broken down um, what I classify as very low gain uh, low gain, the unusable band, as I other, otherwise call it. Uh, low gain for toe bender, <coughs> excuse me. Low gain for fuzz face. Medium gain, range master. High gain, tone tone bender. High gain, uh, fuzz face. Very high gain, fuzz face, and very high gain, which is pretty much what most people would classify as out of spec. Uh, then there's notes on leakage and um, what's acceptable, what I classify as acceptable, and what's not. I've blacked all that out, but at the end of the day, you've heard me talk about that sort of stuff plenty of times um, in many other uh, in many other Jermaine transistor videos. Um, and then uh, fuzz based listening notes um, and how I've come up with those. In fact, I don't see any harm in actually sharing this part with you. There's nothing really to hide here. Um, so for the fuzz based listening notes, this is the note that I have. And again, I'll just narrate it to you. In order to have a true appreciation for a germanium transistor's ability to reproduce good sounding fuzz, it needs to be auditioned. Some transistors that measure low can still sound fantastic. Conversely, some transistors, some transistors measure in holy, grail, in holy grail HFE bands with ideal leakages, but when used in circuit, these devices can be found to be very unpleasant frequency, to have a very unpleasant frequency response. Furthermore, some transistors that are not designed for small signal amplification, um, ultra-high frequency transistors, for example, can be used in fuzz phase circuits with very pleasing results. This is why I believe there is no complete report on a germanium transistor for fuzz circuits without an accompanying audition of the, uh, of the device. Sorry, I lost my, lost my spot. Of course, as the nature of audio uh, as, the as the nature of audio analysis, I think I'm supposed to say, this section is based on opinion, etc, uh, etc. Et so it goes on and on about why I've, um, uh, you know, how. If you want to read that, go for it. Just pause the video and you can read through the rest of it. Um, and just some things about uh, how I've actually tested it uh, consistently for each transistor. So we've got a, that's the actual list of transistors that I've, that I've tested. At this point in time, the list continually grows. Um, and there actually are a few missing from that as well. Um, but that's what I've measured um, to this point. Took a long time to measure that, as you could, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Uh, and I'll just show you two of the Jermaine Jim transistors that I've actually measured. 
the document's all a bit out of whack because I was mucking around with the um, with the page with the pages. Let me just get that back in screen. So let's have a look at this one. Uh, so it's the 2N1301 sample size was 10 and the source was mini FUX. It's a bit of a funny name, I don't think I want to say that. Um, so this measured, this is how this particular tra domain transistor measured. So you've got um, results, uh, low gain, low leakage, a few possibly usable for Germanium Darlington's very low gain leakage, but most appearing in the dead zone, which is the unusable band, 25 to 50 HFE, one possible suspect unit at 300 HFE left, left off from curve trace image because it would be over here somewhere, you wouldn't be able to see it. And then the fuzz face listing notes, uh, they're the two transistors I use. So 43 HFE of 21 leakage, 48 HFE of 25 leakage, thunderous mid-range but low sustain and dead high strings, uh, short decay on high strings, would be an excellent device with higher gain. So as you can see, this is appearing in the unusable uh, zone, but you could... But I'm saying here, if you use that for a Q1 in a fuzz face, or two, a Q1 and a Q2 in a in a um, tone bender with a higher gain to, uh, transistor to follow, they still would be very good. Um, and then it's actually got the pin out there as well, um, and that's the curve trace showing where they are. So 20 HFEs here, 50 HFEs here. So you can see they're between 20 and 50 uh, between those two. <clears throat> and then the next one is that. So that was two and one three. 1303 and the next one was 2N1305, same sort of sample size of 10, actually that's a mistake, it should actually be 20, because I actually did another, I did another sample later on, um, so the results are gold league, varying re resin colours, I forgot to mention too, I sometimes note physical characteristics of the transistor, because it can help <coughs> later on, very good range of HFEs, some out of spec higher and lower, but still high yield. Leakage is low, often less than half per HFE. Um, so half per HFE means if it's 100 HFE, the leakage would be 50. Fuzz face listening notes, um, they're the two that I used. Um, I must have forgot to write down the actual... Um, oh, no, no, that's, uh, that's 90 HFE with low leakage and an approximately 140 with low leakage. Uh, good amount of bass, extremely low, low no signal noise. So that's when you turn your guitar, your guitar volume off. Is there any noise? Does the, does this, are the transistors producing any noise? Basically, very good frequency response. These sound very pleasing to the ear. Four out of five. So that's a really good one. Now you're off. You're just about to go to eBay and buy a whole bunch of those, aren't you? But this is the point of having a document like this. I'll show you in a moment the next sample and what happened. Uh, pin out on the bottom and then you can see here um, you've got one sort of around the 40 mark and that goes all the way up to 200 so that's HFE obviously down the side here and how they rate across. The next sample was a bit different. Um, same model number. Note, second sample test results vary from the first. The high gain trace below belong to a device with blue resin all others had green resin and measured, measured much lower. More testing based on resin color batch codes needed. And I can tell you now that the blue resin 2N1305s measure much better than, uh, much, uh, have, a, have a higher gain than the green resin, but they're all being sold as 2N1305. So if you're buying a 2N1305 Gold League transistor, ask them what color the resin is because sorry the camera cut out so i'm just going to wrap this up now just make sure with the 2n1305 that you buy one that has the that you check the resin um, is the point of that so that's it for the video i hope you like it i'm going to have to wrap it up really quickly because of the um storage is about to run out again um just some of the ways that i test my germanium transistors and um it's a good idea to do something like this if you've got the time um, to put it together and if it um if you think it would help you out uh, or make your life a bit easier, then um, yeah, go for it. Anyway, thanks for watching the video and uh, don't forget to subscribe, etc. Cheers.